These are poorly named variables, and these are good ones. You can make a collection of variables, and you can scope variables to specific properties. For our second course on variables, we're serving up some best practices. Stick around to learn about naming conventions, collections, and scope. Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Here we have a card made up of many different styles. Which properties in this card can be variables? How is that different from a style? Styles let you stack properties like multiple fills. Variables are a single value. You can define fills using variables, but if you want to reuse the saved stack of things, that's a style. Look at the image area of this card. It's made up of a solid fill, a gradient, and an image. Let's select our solid fill and make sure it's using our card media background variable. We can do the same thing for the overlay. Figma doesn't support gradients or images as variables. Maybe someday. We can store this as a style to be reused on each card that needs it. Maybe one of the most important parts of variables is their name. How we name variables makes a big difference in how we understand them. In our last video, Intro to Variables, we used variables named brand-dark and brand-light. While those make sense at first glance, they fall apart when we try to apply them to dark mode. Brand-light won't mean the same thing on a dark mode design. We need variable names that are more specific and work across different modes. Instead, we can name variables based on what they're styling. So we could name one color-heading and another type-heading-size. More good examples would be color primary, color on primary, color caption, etc. With names like this, the meaning stays the same across modes. Color heading means the same no matter if we're in dark mode, light mode, or some other mode. When you start naming variables well, you end up with a lot of them. This creates a lot of flexibility, but can be cumbersome to manage. One nice feature is that we can create collections and groups to help keep our variables organized. To open the local variables modal, make sure nothing is selected, and in the right side panel, click the open variables icon. One common use for collections is for color primitives and semantic colors. Click the kebab menu in the upper left corner and select create collection. Name it color primitives. Here we can define a palette of colors like red 500, 400, 300. Let me finish this out real quick. Now we can use this drop down to select between our collections. Select good names. Let's rename this to semantic colors. We can actually reference our primitive color variables in our semantic variable values. As an example, we can make our color primary variable point to our red 500 primitive since that's our brand color. We can take this a step further by grouping the variables inside a collection. We'll create groups for color, type, and cards. There are two ways to do this. We can shift select all the variables we want to group, right click, and select new group with selection. I'll call this group color, or we can use forward slashes in the name. Let's rename our heading variable to type slash heading slash size and press enter. As you can see, these can be nested too. Now our well-named variables are nicely organized. Finally, I wanna show you how Figma lets us scope variables to specific properties for number and color types. In our variable modal, hover over one of the color variables and click the edit variable icon that appears. This will open a popover where we can define which properties the variables can be applied to. Let's make this heading variable only work for text. Now, if we try to apply this variable to something outside of that scope, it won't even show up in the list of options. Well, there's your Figma variable best practices. I hope this Figma bite helps you build a victoriously variable vernacular. Thanks for watching.